Good morning. Welcome to the Tuesday Refresher session. This is Jim Chastain. I'm with the support group at Easy Power. Today is the first of a three-part series focused on data collection uh, with more emphasis and, and uh, I guess, in a little slower fashion than we do when we do the Arc Flash overview. So we're going to start with just an overview of the system, talk in terms of how to prepare for a data collection if you're doing a new Arc assessment, Arc Flash hazard assessment, primarily focusing on the equipment and the details that need to be collected. Next week, we're going to show how OneLine Designer, the first module, the database editor part of the EasyPower suite, can be used to help build tem templates for existing systems and uh, even do a first pass at your one-line diagram and use that as your database uh, template. And then two weeks from today, we're going to be actually doing an introduction and an announcement in this space of our tablet-based application for data, data collection. So uh, make sure you set your calendars for that. So welcome, everyone. Okay, so if we're talking about starting an arc flash hazard assessment, the probably the keystone to making sure that everything is, is complete and accurate, ultimately, is to develop a one-line diagram. If you do not have a one-line diagram of your system, then you have several, more than likely, uh, several pieces of documents or records that can be utilized to at least anticipate what that one-line diagram is going to look like. A lot may be based upon tribal knowledge of the maintenance team and what people understand the layout to be. But what, you, what I would suggest and what you want to start with is a hand-drawn version of what the one-line diagram, or at least what you think it uh, looks like. Now, if you're lucky and you have even an old one-line diagram, that's an excellent place to start. But uh, the name of the game is getting started, and once you're there, once you kind of understand what's missing, is you need to build a conceptual map of how to address this overall project of doing data collection. And as you identify pieces of your one line, whether you know how they're connected or not, you more than look likely know where they're located in your plant. And these key components include transformers, utility co connections, generators, uh, all of the switch gear and distribution points, including the motor control centers and the panels, and any type of ATSs or switching locations. You want to identify all of these as the equipment for arc flash hazard assessment. Now, based upon the plan of attack, even if you start with a hand-drawn one-line diagram, you need to build up a plan for site inspection. Probably one of the more costly elements of doing a arc flash hazard assessment is the data collection phase because if you don't uh, do a good job the first, at the first pass, you will continually have to go back and uh, recollect data and if that involves shutting down equipment or opening up energized equipment, you're kind of making a dangerous situation even more so if you have to do it multiple times. So as you understand what it is that needs to be uh, data, data-wise has to be collected, then you need to build templates for that. And as we get to the tail end of this, I will recommend some reference material that we make available from the website that can be utilized if it's possible to de-energize the equipment, that's the preferred basis for uh, doing data collection because at a first pass, it may take time and uh, effort, uh, not only in accessing the equipment, but finding the data, the labels, the nameplates, and uh, some of which can be a dangerous situation if if the equipment's energized. So if there's some way to coordinate the effort with scheduled shutdowns or an off shift where there's equipment that can be de-energized without a problem, make sure you build that into your schedule and your plan of attack for all the right reasons. Basically, you want this operation to be as safe as possible 
and not unnecessarily put people's uh, safety at risk. So it's important to understand that the arc flash hazard assessment is primarily for those locations where workers are exposed to the risk of arc flash. And that means if the equipment has the potential to be worked on while energized, uh, inspected, maintained in any way or form where bare conductors are opened up to human exposure, that's potentially an arc flash hazard that needs to be identified and at the very least labeled. It includes uh, even branch circuits. And as you, as you learn more about the tools, this ends up being uh, a problem in older facilities, specifically in the 480 volts and below at remote panels when distributed discrete protective devices haven't been properly installed or properly designed in the system. Now, there is a, a point that uh, panels and switchboards below 208 volts with a service transformer of less than 125 kVA necessarily may be considered a low arc sa safety risk. They still need to be labeled uh, because of the voltage level if they're, in fact, going to be opened up. So all of that needs to be, like I say, part of the plan, and then you can deal with that once the data is collected as you get into the arc flash uh, analysis. So all panels with breakers and fuses, sh fuses should be included if there's any potential significant arc flash injury and even piece of equipment that have large amount of energy within the system and the only operation you're going to be doing is operating a circuit breaker even with the panel closed up, the, uh, there's a potential for an arc flash event and recognizing that and understanding that is important for any electrician that's going to be operating a cir circuit breaker. Now, as you start the process, or actually go out and start to do the data collection, it's important to have a list, not only of what you're trying to collect, but what equipment that you need to take with you to be prepared. Again, you want to be as efficient on this one trip to the equipment as you can. Um, first and foremost, we put as a signed work permit so that everybody understands in the management chain that this operation is going on. If necessary, you've done tag out, lock out for de-energized equipment. Also need to include the process of testing the equipment that's been de-energized to verify it's safe before you take off any PPE. If you need, and that, that infers or implies that you need to have PPE equipment on as you do the testing. So there's some catch-22 conditions there. So anyway, we cover all that in, in detail in other sessions. A writing, some, something to make notes with, writing equipment, including pencil, erasers, pens, paper if you have a drawing, initial one-line drawing, notes, facility drawings, uh, again, the templates that we talked about, specifically if you have adjustable protective devices where there can be multiple settings that have to, have to be recorded, it's like I say, even if you do have a one-line diagram, even if you think nothing's changed insofar as the plant, what you really want to do is validate that the data is correct, validate that the settings haven't been changed on any adjustable devices or fuses. Frequently, that can be a change that isn't documented necessarily, and uh, that's the purpose of doing the, the data collection phase of the arcing uh, arc flash assessment. Um, flashlight. Obviously, the, many of these pieces of equipment may have uh, name plates that are hard to access, poorly lit, and it's important to have a flashlight, hopefully that's non-metallic, and uh, you have the ability to use it and, and be able to put your, uh, your face in, or your eyes in such a, a location as you can see them. Again, all that exacerbates working on energized equipment. So some, I think, forethought is worth, is worth it when you're thinking safety on the initial data collection task. Likewise, uh, some sort of a mirror, if you get into equipment where you have cables run 
Some places may be hard to access, may be tough to move the cables around in a bundle or a conduit. So you may have to look on the back side for uh, label conditions. Uh, very frequently, uh, strongly recommended to take a digital camera or some sort of video and be careful and make sure as you take the images that it's legible. You can use the data that's taken. It's not just something that's done in a hurry just to record a, date, um, a video. Obviously, you need to take keys or screwdrivers if you need to open up panels or doors. Now, I'm going to touch on each of these pieces of equipment uh, with probably less emphasis here on the on the tail end and we're going to start with utility and it's important I think as you're as you're looking at each of these types of elements to understand what type of data is required the first step once we got the data collected is to do a short circuit analysis and the reason for that is to determine whether or not the equipment can sustain the worst case current levels that potentially could the equipment could be subjected to based upon the uh, orientation and the energies provided. So even though the equipment may not require an arc flash label or it's never going to be opened, it can be critical in terms of determining what the short circuit results are, which again then are, are utilized to calculate instant energy. So there we refer to equipment type, the voltage on the equipment, the MVA, KVA ratings, impedance, the X over R ratios, and the phase connections all need to be verified even if they haven't changed. It's, it's worthy of note that you verify the data is accurate. And again, most of this on some of the larger tough to get to equipment will be on a name, most likely is on a nameplate. So short circuit analysis requires the data from utility connections, generators, transformers, cables, transmission lines, motors. And as I say, the nameplate of the equipment can usually provide the most, most of the necessary data. Um, if you're missing something uh, specific, you can get, usually get that information from a manufacturer's data sheet. And in some cases, uh, the tools can help assist in terms of of connecting the dots based upon what you have and uh, what you're trying to get logged into your one-line diagram. And this is by virtue of the fact that there's an extensive library in the EasyPower tool suite. Now, it's important as you get to the protective devices because time and uh, the time of the arc is a significant contributor in the determination of incident energy that as much as possible you get the details in terms of the of the settings, the uh, relays or the CTs that are used for picking up those sensors, uh, the ratings on the fuse, labels, peak let through current which probably will not be on a label, it will be on the data sheet or in the device library, and then the breakers, the types of breakers, the fault clearing time, the pickup settings, the delay curves, and much of this, once you get the type and part number correct, the Easy Power Tools will uh, prompt you and make sure you you understand the data that's uh, being required during the data collection. And then you want to make sure that the equipment protective device is reliable enough. And part of this is, like I say, the tribal knowledge and based upon the operations or problems that they've had with that piece of equipment uh, there may be a need to have the equipment uh, tested or cal um, calibrated because the uh, dependability of that equipment is not going to be something that's found in the data sheet. So again, involving the, the people involved with the uh, normal operations is really critical. As I mentioned, um, it's easy, it's relatively easy if we're having multiple trips on a particular relay or a particular breaker to tweak the trip time a couple notches just to make sure things stay up and running. But as I do that, as an electrician on the maintenance shift or the, the swing shift, 
just to keep the plant up and running, I really am not aware and not cognizant of the fact that I may have drastically changed the uh, arc flash hazard that that de device is protecting workers from. So again, the thoroughness of data collection is, is important. Okay, utility data. We actually covered this in copious detail last week, so I'd refer you to uh, that discussion and information in the reference material if you cannot get all this information accurately from the uh, utility company. The transformer data, far and away, is probably one of the most critical elements in terms of energy buffering between the utility and the system. And so based upon the capacity, uh, which would be the MVA or KVA rating, um, without forced air cooling is, is a key element. The rated voltage for both the primary and the secondary, generally the, this will be on the nameplate. And uh, if you're talking about a three winding transformer, you'd also require the voltage on the, the tertiary windings. Impedance, very significant in terms of the value that's listed on the nameplate because that will determine in large measure the environment of our X over R calculations for the rest of the system, or at least the first level or two of switchgear. You want to verify that your connections are solidly uh, made, that you have verified the grounding system and verify that it's correct and secure. The tap voltage, uh, specifically if there's low tap changers, but if there are adjustments or choices between where the voltage connect connections can be made, the taps, that they're reflected on our one-line diagram and in the data we're, we're collecting. I mentioned earlier the X over R ratio Frequently, that may not be on the nameplate. That's why impedance is uh, the impedance ratio is important. The tools will actually uh, calculate that for us based upon the ANSI standards for uh, transformers if we've got the correct information off the nameplate. Cooling class and insulation type are important, and they can uh, they can make different X over R ratios. Uh, based upon the size and class of the transformer. Next level of protection or uh, current limiting capability is the fuse. Frequently, the fuses are the first line of defense in terms of protecting equipment and uh, can be utilized in a current limiting mode for protection of personnel by limiting the arc left through energy for an arc flash event. So off the labels, you need the manufacturer's name, the type and style name, the model speed. These can vary based upon the voltage, the library that the uh, manufacturer has defined. Um, the fuse size and rating, the number of fuses, especially if they're paralleled, because this can be used to increase the continuous rating, but it also can make a difference in terms of the uh, clearing time if we have to take an average across a number of components. Then the enclosure type uh, can make a difference in terms of um, what happens during an arcing event, especially if there's a, a switch or an interrupting device associated with the switch. So frequently, the, a uh, fuse label will look something like this and include sometimes a catalog number, sometimes the size and rating all of which you want to be able to document and carry forth even if it's not uh, part of the calculations. It does amplify the completeness of your data collection. So here's a typical uh, fuse label. And again, sometimes these are well uh, displayed and sometimes they're obscured. Likewise, circuit breaker data, high voltage circuit breakers you uh, need to be able to determine the manufacturer, the op uh, operating time. Usually this is in cycles or in milliseconds. And the relay that operates the breaker is going to be part of this collection. Notice the details of the relay data we actually have down 
farther on our list here. Low voltage circuit breakers. Critical importance because, as I mentioned, have mentioned prior to this, you actually find more dangerous situations on the low voltage side of the distribution system than in the high voltage side because of the lower uh, fault currents. So you need to understand need to record the manufacturer, the type or model name, the frame size, continuous current rating, the trip type, whether it's a molded case circuit breaker, solid state uh, tripping, or a thermal trip, or even a mechanical, uh, electromechanical device. The interrupting current, uh, again this is utilizing the equipment duty calculations, may not be on the breaker, but it uh, will be part of the device library. Likewise, the voltage ratings. Um, so, continuous current ratings and then the, the trip settings. Solid state trips will have sometimes separate devices, even different manufacturers. You need to record the name, model name, the current settings if they're using um, a sensor or a plug size. Each of the dial settings needs to be recorded. Long time delay, long time uh, setup, short time pickup, short time delay, and instantaneous, as well as any ground fault settings. So you need to be familiar with the, the verbiage or the labeling conventions that that manufacturer uses. And frequently a solid state trip device will include whether it's solid state or dial settings on the, uh, on the front panel, sometimes it's worth taking a picture of this, especially if you can't read the uh, display, or if it's obscured or worn off or, or dirty, because going back to the data sheet, you can get a reference that maybe this was 2.5 instead of uh, 0.25 and vice versa, as long as you've recorded the uh, relative dial setting of the particular, particular device. Relays uh, are an important protective device because they cover, uh, a very, they can be very sensitive. So typically they're current rated, but they also have voltage, power, and frequency uh, relays. Most relays are fed by current transformers, so when you obtain the data, make sure you get the right CT ratio information as you're collecting the data. Again, be aware of this and be cognizant of the fact that these two devices are related, the CT and the relay that uses it, so you don't have to make multiple trips back. Most modern relays will have LCD monitors, others will have the dial settings. Frequently there will be multifunction relays and it's, you need to be familiar with the operations of the display as you go in to record the data. Uh, if possible you want to recover or solicit any kind of test reports that have previously been done and field inspections that uh, make sure you're validating the test reports or validating the dial settings that were recorded and then make sure you're aware of and that the codes or the time over current relays symbology is used and uh, you're familiar with the way the manufacturer will display this in the relay itself. Generators also have an important part because even though we may only have operations on a generator for a short period of time, or in some cases an unexpectedly long period of time, they need to be included in the arc flash assessment, and in some cases they actually can be the restricting scenario if there needs to be inspection or uh, maintenance on the system while under generator power. So the generator rating and KVA or MVA, the rated voltage, the rated speed, the frequency of the power generated, manufacturer and serial number, uh, all are critical. And frequently there'll be uh, information that you'll have to get off the data sheet in terms of sub-transient reactants. And the tools can help identify this as you uh, look at how easy power data dialog box is set up for generators. Then even though motor data, um, motors kind of are the end of the chain as far as loads, they can be a surprising contributor to incident energy during the first half cycle, especially for large motors. 
So obtaining the data would include uh, horsepower, kilowatts, the rated voltage, full load current, speed of the motor. Again, if it's non-standard, then you make sure you've recorded that uh, to make to ensure that you're getting the right ANSI standard averages if you're using either lookup tables or in some cases the easy power calculations for uh, full load current and other parameters. Manufacturer's name and serial number and likewise as compared to the generators there can be a need for subtransient reactance data that if you can't or, uh, extract it from a manufacturer's data sheet frankly uh, you can access tech support at easypower.com for recommendations of values to use when you get to that point. Again, motor data, motor contributions during arc flash are fairly short-lived, but can be um, important, especially when you're considering the duty ratings of equipment on a bus level where during that first half cycle, motor contribution can actually push the, the stress on that bus over what's rated when it was originally designed. Cable data is surprisingly important because it constitutes um, the biggest source of impedance when you're doing long cable runs, especially in the low voltage side of the system. So most of this information comes from the marking on the outer coating of the cable. Frequently this can be covered up or dirty in terms of being able to read. Another reason to have the equipment de-energized so that the uh, technician can do a little bit more thorough job of either cleaning uh, the label location off or better inspecting the label on the cable itself. But you want to be able to verify the conductor size, the conductor material, the length of the cable, the insulation type, the voltage on the system at that point, the conductors per cable, and then the number of conductors per phase. Clearly, um, if you make a mistake in these areas, it can be caught post-processing, if you will, by verifying uh, with a load flow check. But um, you want to, as much as possible, understand and make sure you have the right number of conductors per phase on every phase when you're doing the data collection. And you'll see as you get into the tools for cables that all this information is relayed or has a place in the calculation mode. And as I mentioned before, frequently the accuracy and the dependability of this particular data bo uh, box, people will invest in easy power for this calculation alone, because this is the most accurate calcula calculation of an impedance, because it's based upon the construction of the cable. And so what this will give us is a, by determining the length, the number of conductors per phase, the type of conductor, the insulation, and the size will give us an ampacity and a quick check between what the load condition is, how, how large the load is, and whether or not the ampacity will support that load will verify that we, we got it all straight when we we're doing data collection. Okay, so this is details on the data that needs to be collected. What we'll talk about next week is how by looking at a model or a typical one-line diagram at each of these elements, what the tool expects us to enter as far as data, and then how to use the tool to create the template for the technician to go out and use the data to make or collect the data to make sure that he's properly and sufficiently collecting every piece that's required and not having to make multiple trips. So this kind of goes to the bottom line that I like to enforce. We want to make sure we use our maintenance team as part of this data collection process. One, to make sure we're catching any uh, anomalies that the, the system may be uh, exhibiting, especially on a day-to-day -day basis. But secondarily, to making sure that our maintenance team is aware of how important this data is as we're doing our flash assessment. And so they're not, they're not glossing over the fact, well, I replaced a fuse of a different size because that's all I had in the truck or in my toolbox as I was bringing the system back online. And all that becomes much more evident as we're doing some preliminary calculations using the tools. 
At any rate, all that is going to be next week, and um, I invite you to uh, visit the website. On the website, you'll find the ability to download demo tools at no cost. You're more than welcome to uh, visit our, our res ArcFlash resource page where there's over 30 tutorials with in-depth analysis on how to do each of these um, studies in particular. I would refer you to our pre-recorded refresher sessions, which cover a um, host of topics, including MCC modeling, protective device coordination, all 30-minute sessions on uh, these focus elements. By all means, if uh, you'd like a copy of this slide, let me know. I'd be happy to send it out to you so you can catch up on anything you may have missed or review uh, any of these topics. Be aware, also on the uh, website, we have a full schedule of regional training scheduled for this year. We'll be in Toronto later uh, this quarter, then New Jersey, even a couple sessions on the West Coast. Appreciate everyone attending. By all means, uh, if there's anything we can do to help you out, feel free to contact us at saleseasypower.com or if you have questions for me on this subject, you're welcome to, to relay it to jim at easypower.com.